Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. They can't save the day, can't baby? First delivered for use by the United States Air Force in 1975, The A-10 Thunderbolt is the Air Force's first aircraft specifically designed for the close air support of ground forces. According to the official Air Force site, the plane had the ability to combine large military loads, long loiter, and wide combat radius. The A-10 Thunderbolt II is the perfect plane for austere landings. It's important that our allies understand that if we're going to integrate uh, with them or if we're going to support them, that we can do that from an increasing number of locations. We don't need a full fighter runway or a full fighter infrastructure to go out and generate and then deliver attack air power. We can do that from, uh, from smaller strips, from highways and from dirt landing zones also known under the nickname the Warthog. The A-10 is a twin-engine jet aircraft mainly used against light attack aircraft and ground targets. They offer maneuverability at low air speeds and altitude while keeping an accurate platform for weapons delivery and can fire 3,099 rounds of 30 millimeter GUA-8A Gatling gun a minute. Thanks to the titanium armor designed to protect the pilots, as well as redundant primary structural sections. The A-10 Thunderbolt can survive direct hits from many armor piercing and high explosive projectiles up to 23 millimeters. Start point, call ready nine line. This will be a type two, bomb on target. One, two, three, from your hold. First developed for the U.S. Air Force by the OEM team from Fairchild Republic Company, now part of Northrop Grumman. The original study contract for the plan was awarded to the OEM team to follow in the footsteps of the P-47 Thunderbolt. The team was tasked with designing a close air support aircraft that Northrop Grumman calls rugged and survivable to protect troops on the ground. When it comes to actual flying and fighting, the Thunderbolts are assigned to the 75th Expeditionary Fighter Squadron of Moody Air Force Base in Georgia. As early as 2019, the squadron was deployed to Afghanistan, along with the A-10 Thunderbolts. Like any plane, the squadron had to keep up with the regular maintenance schedule of the aircraft to keep it in working order. I'm a weapons load crew member. We work in a team of three. So we have the one man, the two man, which is my position, and then a three man. As a two man, I'm mostly responsible for handling the tools, um, preparing the racks for loading the bombs, preparing the rocket pods, helping out with any end of firing inspections and stuff like that. However, the Warthog was designed to have interchangeable parts on the left and right sides, including the engines, vertical stabilizers, and the main landing gear. Also designed to have a short takeoff capability, the A-10 Thunderbolt carries a weight of about 51,000 pounds at the time of its takeoff. And a barrel assembly for the 30 mm GAU-8 Avenger rotary cannon mounted under the fuselage.
The OEM team from Fairchild Republic Company created the Thunderbolt with close range and standoff position firing in mind, aimed at destroying enemy armor. The aircraft can fly about 800 miles at around 420 miles per hour. But eventually, the plane must come down. In order for the A-10 Thunderbolt to land, however, it needs about 9,000 feet of runway. But that doesn't necessarily mean the plane needs a traditional runway. In fact, the plane has landed on many highways over the years. In July of 2022, an A-10 touched down on a closed-down civilian highway in Michigan, nicknamed the Hawk LZ, in tribute to Major Durwood Hawk Jones. During its landing on the runway, the plane was prepped and ready to send back into the air. Part of preparations for a Thunderbolt flight might include the loading of weapons. The A-10 has proved valuable to the U.S. military operations due to its combination of large and varied ordnance load and long loiter time. The Air Force states that the plane holds up to 16,000 pounds of mixed ordnance on eight underwing and three underfuselage pylon stations. While part of Operation Inherit Resolve, the A-10 held a form of rocket called the Advanced Precision Kill Weapon System, or APKWS. The previous rocket held by the A-10 is disassembled given a guidance system, put back together, and then loaded into the aircraft by hand. It's nice to see the bombs get loaded and then the jets come back without them, because that, uh, that means that hostile targets died. That means uh, that we, we got the mission done. We either took out a high-value target or uh, we're, saving, we're saving our troops on the ground. To keep the aircraft in working order, the squadrons often conduct a variety of exercises, including gunnery exercises. These exercises are a form of training geared towards delivering accurate fire against targets. These may include evaluations of one's performance. When it comes to A-10, these exercises are important due to the Air Force's reliability in a Thunderbolt's weapons delivery accuracy. During the Gulf War, the A-10 planes launched 90% of the AGM-65 Maverick missiles. Along with accuracy, the plane's pilot must also be able to fire in the dark. So, the pilot requires special training to use night vision goggles to conduct missions. Similar to the A-10, the AC-130U, or Spooky, gunships focus on a similar mission of providing close air support to troops. This may include troops in contact, convoy escort, and point air defense. The aircraft are heavily armed and designed to have side-firing weapons with a sensor, navigation, and fire control. Yeah. The planes are made to fly in all forms of weather conditions, both day and night. 
considered the third generation of C-130 gunships, and a modified C-130 Hercules, the Spooky can hold 40mm and 105mm cannons, and a 25mm Gatling gun. Each round of ammunition is meticulously loaded by hand into the aircraft by the 4th Special Operations Squadron. Known as the largest of nine flying squadrons within the 1st Special Operations Wing, the squadron prepares and executes the precise delivery of munitions during missions. Flying at a speed of 300 miles per hour, the AC-130 can travel at about 1,300 miles. Its all-light level television system and infrared detection system are used to scan a full 360 degrees, allowing for the plane to search and find targets much easier. In addition, Boeing states that the television also incorporates a laser target designator and rangefinder. Allowing the Spooky to designate targets for other aircraft with the capabilities of laser-guided weapons. Due to its importance in the Air Force, the AC-130 is equipped with a night vision imaging system, allowing for usage during night missions. It wouldn't take a gunner very long to find this thing and knock it down in the daytime. Nighttime, they can't even find it. They can hear you, but hopefully you're putting enough bullets down, he's not thinking about sticking his gun up. He just wants to stick, not get hit. So, nights are our bread and butter. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.